uh, in the state of Georgia and across the United States of America. And my friends, I have the answer to that question. And it's in my book. <laughs> Which you a team of America's first African American congressmen who, for the majority of these individuals, hailed from the southern states. So Mississippi, Georgia, Florida. Now, I'm very much summarizing uh, a lot of history. Uh, that will take a whole lot more time to kind of break down as to how, why, and when. But the bottom line was, Dempsey Coates, in my mind's eye, was able to vote for an individual by the name of Jefferson Long. Jefferson Long just so happened to be representing the district that my relative actually lived in. And he was elected the same year, about the same year, Dempsey Coates was able to register to vote. This was a history-making moment in America because, as you can imagine, the Civil War was predominantly about the argument surrounding in the enslavement of African Americans in the United States of America. That was one of the key reasons around the economics of it, the North versus the South, and then, of course, there were neutral states in the West that were beginning to take sides in this war. So to have the formerly enslaved now represent millions of people in the United States of America actually shows what America and what progress could be. Now, I know a lot of us wonder why is race always mentioned? Why is it always a topic of discussion? Now, many people have made many careers <laughs> out of this whole topic and conversation. But the truth is, Race was introduced systematically. Therefore, the only way to remove the conversation of race is to turn the tide systematically, to go back in history and look at the points of exclusion, the points where individuals were not actually actively being uh, acknowledged as citizens. We can also have this conversation about women and the rights of women in America during this time. There are many different connections that we can talk about in terms of the exclusion and the systematic ways that has really impacted even present day conversations. So I draw your attention to a quote by Professor Joseph. Writing black history is not an act of exclusion, but rather an act of inclusion a way of inserting centrality of black people within the American story. So it was my inclination to write the stories of these 19 gentlemen who many people have never been introduced to or never heard of. In the act of their elections, they were able to pass historic legislation, legislation that actually helped uh, Chinese immigrants during this time period that were also being excluded and uh, really their labor also was basically close to slave labor wages as well. Uh, these 19 African American congressmen were also not just advancing the causes of black people but they were also advancing the causes of all the disenfranchised people who did not have a voice at that time. Many of them took place um, and took part in even movements that would happen later in time, uh, such as the Niagara movement, uh, surrounding women's rights and uh, as a citizen. But back to this time period, known as the American Reconstruction period, again, following the Civil War, there are a lot of documentation that just so happens to have gone missing. Uh, it could have been as you know, basically, uh, many fires have occurred, uh, many, uh, you know, issues occurred throughout this time period. Uh, for a person like me, it's, you kind of have to stand back and wonder if many of these pieces of information was intentionally excluded in order to ensure one side of the story was told for hundreds of years Black Americans were disenfranchised and denied their education, 
their literal identity, their names stripped, their homelands basically colonized, and their culture pressed down and suppressed. Now, whenever you try to suppress a person or a human being, we are resilient. There is something called grit, and despite that, we will see the great successes of culture that will inter be interwoven in today's conversation around history, education, music, mathematics, science, the literal engineering and creation of the traffic light was done by an African American. We could literally list all of the great inventions that were created. Unfortunately, a lot of those patents were written in other uh, people's names, so therefore these individuals never actually received credit for their work. But these 19 Congress people would create an atmosphere in which they are able to pass laws to get equal protection under the law, as well as being able to vote and expand the franchise of running for public office. These 19 individuals were the leaders of hundreds of individuals who actually ran in the South, in the Southern states, in local, state, and national, eventually, positions. It's American history. I would love for, for there to be a day when we didn't have to have the elective of black history because it's simply taught in the comprehensive breakdown of American history. Not an elective, but in deeply incorporated in the curriculum and in our culture. We should not have to have this type of exclusion uh, and make it into basically an elective when it just should be a part of the story. Um, I've been traveling the state uh, talking about um, what's happening in the southern states present day. There are creators of textbooks that are presently in the classrooms that I teach, in reality, that have been made in states where they are systematically banning the books of black authors, systematically banning the ideas of history um, around black history, and removing it out of advanced placement classes, and so on and so forth. Okay? This fight has never truly stopped. And hopefully someone, someone in this room will be inspired by the thought and the fact that you don't have to be a black American to promote the ideas of black history. You don't have to be able to have that um, idea, but I can't tell this story because that actually is going against what the message should be. Black history is American history. Feel empowered to learn more, get connected, Inspire somebody else to ask the questions that often are not raised in our classrooms in this experience that we're here today in this academic space. Thanks. I don't, how many people have actually uh, participated in a protest? Raise your hand. Or an active demonstration. Oh, great, radical people. I love it. All right. Oftentimes in uh, recent history, especially around 2019, we begin to hear the phrase, say their names. This was in reference to uh, news that probably should have been a little more well produced and acknowledged about the senseless killing of black men in particular, and then eventually we began to see more videos of the expansion of that, uh, just of people being brutally killed by police officers in our streets of America. Many of those names were not stated. Therefore, in protests and spaces of resistance, we began to say the names of the individuals that are often left out in our histories, in our textbooks, and even in our present day news. So we have the names such as Hiram Rhodes Rebels, who was the first African American elected senator to the United States Senate from the state of Mississippi. You also have Jefferson Long, who I mentioned represented my four times great grandfather, Dempsey Coates, from the state of Georgia. And today, 
Uh, we, we find individuals such as Richard Kane, who uh, actually was a part of a movement to expand America's first African-American churches in the United States. He ultimately became a bishop. Benjamin Turner ends up unfortunately dying um, due to a lot of health reasons. So how, how many uh, folks that are enrolled in health sciences or anything until life, all right? So when we talk about health and equity of health, uh, they didn't have really good access to good quality food. Therefore, you'll find that many of these individuals did not live very long, but their impact in some way, shape, or form will be in your hand momentarily. Unfortunately, there are individuals such as Jeremiah Harrison, who is a brilliant, he is described as a genius by Frederick Douglass, and his humor is something that was much needed in times like this uh, during the post-Civil War. Brilliant in object poverty, working the coal mines in uh, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and he eventually travels to the state of Colorado where he finds his untimely death because he is attacked and killed by wild animals because he was trying to find some food. His death certificate went unnoticed until very recently where they were able to update it to indicate this horrible experience that he had to experience. How is it that you go from the pinnacle to political society to make such great impact only to end up in the wilderness, hungry and seeking your food? A history long forgotten. How shall we remember their names? So the challenge today is to lift up the ideas and thoughts around remembrance. And in our culture, the idea of remembering one's relatives, ancestors, and those that have gone on is vitally important. And the written work is also important. So actually, to your point a little earlier, we really need more people to step up and to engage in the academic pursuits of writing this history, researching this history. So the skills you are learning here could truly impact the movement, uh, in particular around remembering the ideas of our, uh, in particular around remembering the ideas of our, headed to the teaching profession here. Anyone interested? Very good. All right, we need more teachers, folks. Even if you do it two years right out of your academic space, two to three years. The teaching profession is unfortunately under attack, but it's yet the most important thing that underlines the entire American society and the advancement of our causes in terms of freedom and our liberties. Our teachers are under attack. They're being criminalized in certain states, Texas, Oklahoma, Florida. Uh, I've already mentioned the banning of books that's extensively happening. And unfortunately, teachers are awfully underpaid for the work that they do. Continue your academic pursuits and whatever you're going in your life direction, that you remember the little old speaker that you met one time at the Honors Plenary on today, asking you to remember and to create, to be thoughtful, and to remember that life outside of your own personal pursuits, reaching out to your local community, wherever that is, making an impact can go a very long way and it may even change the life of someone almost like me. And I'll give my last story. If it wasn't for a teacher by the name of Jack Paul at the local high school, James Hill House High School, history teacher, he provided me the opportunity to actually go to Washington, D.C. with my first trip outside the state. Changed my life. Walking the halls and the buildings of the Capitol and to be able to see where democracy 
was created and made, I knew that I had to come back home and make an impact. And I ended up uh, serving as probably, yeah, the youngest African American in the first to serve the West Side of the City of New Haven on the City Council. I remember that moment. Each and every one of you could inspire a child to remember, to be inspired, and to take an impactful direction in a way that could change all of the issues that we face here in society. What will you do to help us make that? Thank you. My name is Rachel Dalton, and I'm a, a student here at Southern. I'm studying law, um, and I just was able to have the experience um, of listening uh, to his speech, and it's just always great to have people from the community who actually come in here, and, you know, it makes a difference to hear someone really talk to you. It, it's, it's powerful when you actually see a person's face and the expressions, and, you know, instead of, like, reading it in a paragraph from someone who you know, you have no idea who put it there. So when you hear it directly from someone from the community, I think that that's when it really makes a difference. And so to have, you know, people come in and share these kinds of experiences is, is what makes the difference, you know. That's what makes the change happen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.